Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white angel control deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a ton of new cards from Kaldheim, and one of them is a Righteous Valkyrie, a 3-mana 2-4 angel cleric with flying, saying whenever another angel or cleric enters a battlefield under our control, we gain life equal to that creature's toughness, and as long as we have 27 or more life, creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2. So intuitively, Valkyrie would make the most sense in a black-white aggressive Cleric life gain deck, featuring cards like Speaker of the Heavens, Luminarch Aspirant and Cleric of Life's Bond, and while I'm sure a deck like that could function, I also wanted to play with some other new cards from Kaldheim, including a Furious Retribution, a 4-mana saga that on the first chapter makes a 4-4 white Angel Warrior creature token with Flying and Vigilance, on the second chapter until end of turn, Angels we control gain the ability to tap and destroy target creature with power less than this creature power, and on the final chapter Angels we control gain double strike until end of turn, which potentially represents a ton of extra damage. And then another card that pairs quite nicely with Furious Retribution is Starnheim Unleashed, a 4 mana mythic rare sorcery that makes a 4-4 white angel warrior creature token with flying and vigilance, but we can also foretell Starnheim Unleashed, so we can first pay the 2 generic mana to exile it, and then we can cast it out of exile for the foretell cost of double X and white, in which case we get to make X of those 4-4 white angel warrior creature tokens, so we can potentially exile it on turn 2 and then on turn 3 make a 4-4 angel token, or we can wait Wait until turn 5 to make two of them, and that also scales nicely into the late game, so we can make a ton of angel tokens this way. So let me paint you a picture. On turn 2 we can exile Sternheim Unleashed, on turn 3 we play our Righteous Valkyrie, then on turn 4 we play Furious Retribution, making a 4-4 token, which also gains for life with our Valkyrie, then on the following turn we reach the second chapter of our saga, and our angels gain the ability to tap and destroy a smaller creature, which also pairs nicely with Vigilance tokens, since those can attack first and then still potentially tap to destroy a blocker, and then on 5 mana we get to cast our Sternheim Unleashed for X equals 2, making two more 4-4 Angel tokens, which will gain 8 life with our Valkyrie, so hopefully by now we've reached 27 or more life, our creatures get plus 2 plus 2, which can also factor into the second chapter of Furious Retribution, making it easier to destroy opposing creatures, and then on the following turn we get Double Strike on all our Angels, so we now get to attack with 3 6-6 six, six Double Striking Angels, as well as a 4-6 Righteous Valkyrie, which will hopefully be enough to win the game. So this is a very nice three-card sequence with all new cards from Kaldheim. Of course the opponent will be able to interact with it, so it's not always going to work out that smoothly, but we do have some redundancy here, as we also have the full playset of Emiria Skull as another expensive sorcery that can make some angel tokens, but can also function as a land, so it's dual purpose. And then we've got some other angels with Legion Angel, and two more copies in the sideboard can search up another one when it enters a battlefield, so that can also provide a steady stream of angels to go with our Furious Retribution. And another new card from Kaldheim is Dream Devourer, which plays into the whole foretell theme of the deck. It's a 2 mana 03 Demon Cleric, so it also gains life with our Righteous Valkyrie, saying each non-land card in our hand without foretell has foretell, and its foretell cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by 2, so we can now exile each non-land card from our hand, and then cast it on a later turn for a reduced mana cost, which plays out quite nicely in this deck, since we do have a lot of medium to expensive cards with at least one or two mana in their generic mana cost, so we can take full advantage of the 2 mana discount on Dream Devourer, so we can maybe exile an Amiris Call on turn 3, and then on turn 5 cast it, making two 4 4 Angel tokens, which is a similar rate to Starnheim Unleashed. And then whenever we foretell a card, Dream Devourer also gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, so it can maybe chip in for some damage against the more controlling decks, otherwise a nice 03 blocker that can maybe soak up a bit of damage. Then we also have two copies of Heartless Act as a nice cheap spot removal spell, and then of course we can exile a whole bunch of cards at 2 mana thanks to the foretell mechanic, so we can also make use of our 2 mana with Starnheim Unleashed, or Doomscar, which is our sweeper of choice, can exile it for 2 mana and then cast it for 1 and double white to destroy all creatures, so against some more aggressive creature decks we can just hold onto some of our angels, and then cast Doomscar to wipe the board, and then rebuild and quickly take over the game. 
Then at 3 mana, besides Righteous Valkyrie, we also have 2 copies of Elspeth's Nightmare as a saga that can destroy a small creature on the first chapter, and then on the second chapter can take away a non-creature non-land card from the opponent's hand, so this shines against a rogues matchup where they've got a lot of small creatures and a lot of non-creature spells for us to take away on the second chapter, and then finally also exiles the opponent's graveyard, which is great against Lurus, and then we also have the full playset of Soul Shatter, which makes the opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalkers they control, so this is an answer to potential planeswalkers like Tybalt or Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, which is otherwise very difficult to beat for our deck, since it's very good at dealing with tokens with the minus X ability, which can just minus X for zero and get rid of all our angel tokens. So Soul Shatter helps there. It's also great against the Tybalt's Trickery deck, which can sometimes put a powerful card like Dream Trawler or Coma in play on turn two. And then Soul Shatter is a clean answer to those as well, whereas other cards don't necessarily answer them all that well. And it also has two in the generic mana cost, so it also plays nicely with Dream Devourer, as we can play it for just a single black mana in later turns. And then at 4 mana, we already discussed Furion's Retribution, as well as two copies of Legion Angel with two more in the sideboard, and finally a Miria's Call. And then going over the rest of the mana base, we also have four copies of Fabled Passage, alongside six basic planes and four basic swamps to fetch up, as well as four of the Black White Pathway, and four copies of Savai Triome, which we're playing over the Black White Temple to Scry 1, just because Scry 1 isn't very helpful if you're up against a mill deck, which is going to get rid of your top card anyway. Plus, cycling and drawing a card in the late game is sometimes better than the Scry 1 effect. And it also has the Plains and Swamp card types, which are very important for our castles to come into play untapped. Got two copies of Castle Lock which can draw extra cards in the late game, can also make use of the life gain of Righteous Valkyrie, and then two copies of Castle Ardenvale to make 1-1 tokens. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Not sure yet what to do with the Miria's Call, probably just playing the Triumph Tapped on turn 1. Speaker of the Heavens, so... A more aggressive life gain deck, so this would be a nice matchup to draw Doomscar. Although Valkyrie and Legion Angel can potentially stabilize us nicely. Youthful Valkyrie. This opponent basically has the version of the deck I tried before settling on the more controlling build. So we'll see how that matchup plays out. They might have their own Valkyrie on three. Just an Archfiend's Vessel. Right, let's see if Valkyrie can stabilize us for the time being. Heartless Sanct gets rid of it. Opponent up to 24 now. So we're getting close to Speaker being active. So do they have another removal spell here? Just a second Speaker. Now we can just hard cast Doomscar if we draw it. And be left in a pretty advantageous position. Vassal and Speaker attack will block Speaker. Point is going to go up to 26, so next turn they'll be able to maybe activate Speaker of the Heavens, which is their plan here. And Dream Devourer. So what's my play? Can attack the opponent with Legion Angel. They can jump with Valkyrie. And then... We can get them low enough, or I can just uh, Soul Shatter here, which will get rid of Valkyrie, we attack, and then they can hit us for two on the way back and we'll be okay. Yeah, that seems good. And play Dream Devourer. All of the Death Dweller gets back two of their creatures. 
So now they have a death touching youthful Valkyrie. Up to 24. So we could foretell Legion Angel and the Myrios Call. And then attack with both. And then I'm probably fine with any outcome. And we can do that at instant speed, so I don't need to show them what my intentions are. Alright, so we just need to exile one card, in which case we can just exile this. And then play Legion Angel. Fertile is limited to your own turn, but not limited to sorcery speed. So your opponent can't make an angel token unless they have removal, which they do. Alright. Speaker's now online. So what's my play? If Dream Devourer attacks, they'll just block. So I guess uh, we'll have to just eventually draw into a sweeper or go wide enough that we can pressure the opponent's life total to get them below 27. Finding a removal spell would be easiest. So maybe I'll start by cycling a Savai Triome. Alright, Furious Retribution will do. So think we'll play that. I could also wait a turn, play Legion Angel first in case they have removal for the Angel token, but they'll probably have to top deck one. So I don't think we uh, necessarily play around another removal spell here. Opponent will get to make another Angel token with Speaker, but then next turn we can kill Speaker and hopefully stabilize with the Mirios Call. Valkyrie's fine. Take four. And Heartless Act, also a nice answer here. So... Can Heartless Act a 4-4 on defense, attack, and then tap my Angel to kill... the Speaker of the Heavens. Or I can also just kill the Valkyrie, and that way the opponent will go below 27, but that seems riskier to me. So we'll just kill Speaker. Opponent takes 4. And cast our Amirius Call that we exiled a while ago. And then we should be able to stabilize here. Rampage of the Valkyries, not bad. Can just sacrifice Dream Devourer. So whenever one of their angels dies, we have to sacrifice a creature. Fetch to thin out the deck. Our angels have double strike, so they're only representing 16 damage here, which isn't quite lethal. So we'll play Legion Angel. Don't have another one to search up, unfortunately. Can activate Castle. Although only have one mana left, which is not enough to do anything significant. So do I attack? I guess the Vigilant Angel can attack. And then they'll block. I'll have to sacrifice. And we'll get rid of Legion Angel. And pass it back. So we're relatively stable here. And we do have cancel if the opponent doesn't, so not hating my spot. 
Another Dream Devourer we can sacrifice, maybe. Ooh, a Righteous Valkyrie can gain some more life. So we'll just play it. Could attack with both, it's a little bit risky. We'll just pass. Vessel, that's okay. Heartless Act cannot quite kill a Youthful Valkyrie, but it can remove two counters from it. So we'll send a Vigilant token and a regular one, I think. Dream Devourer down. And probably activate Castle now. Alright. So we'd love to top deck some more Angels, especially our Emirius Call or Starnheim Unleashed. Castle Ardenvale. Another Dream Devourer at least gains three life here. And now we can start attacking. And next turn our opponent should be in trouble. So yeah, ended up being a pretty grindy game. And I think we're gonna get the best of the more aggressive black-white version, despite never really drawing our sweeper. Can make a token. And I uh, guess we'll cycle. Doomscar a little late to the party, but we can foretell it, so we can still activate Castle. And it also pumps our Devourer, so now we should have enough if we draw a uh, another card we can foretell. Which we did. Alright. So, good to see a lot of neat interactions, despite never getting a, a very big Starnheim Unleashed in play to end the game, which would have been nice. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. Turn to either Heartless Act or Fortel Starnheim Unleashed. And then we've got a nice follow-up. I think we'll be able to make use of our mana in the late game here. So we'll just play a tap land. Facing River Glide Pathway, blue-red. Alright, we'll just foretell here. Turn 3, Valkyrie. Turn 4, Legion Angel. Maybe turn 5, make 2 more Angels. gonna get countered, that's fine. Would much rather resolve Legion Angel than Valkyrie. So our opponent on a Jeskai control deck it looks like. Yeah, we'll play Legion Angel. If they've got another counterspell, they've got another counterspell. Next turn I also have the option of just making a token with Castle. Can foretell another Starnheim, can play the one in exile, or we can wait until we have more mana available in case two tokens don't get the job done. I'm sure my opponent's gonna have some sweepers too. So, could just pass and activate Castle, although that plays weak if my opponent just fires off a card draw spell end of turn. Although, if they had a card draw spell, they probably would have foretold the uh, four mana one. So, yeah, there's a few directions we can go. I think either casting Starnheim or making a 1-1 token is the way to go. 
We'll uh, make a 1-1. One, one. Also helps us keep up Heartless Act. Opponent did not spend their mana. Which is a sign that their hand might be more counter spells and removal as opposed to threats. If I don't have a plan, so they tap out for Teferi. Don't worry, I'll think of something. Gets rid of discontinuity. Alright, so we'll attack the ferry, and then I've got a few options. Think fast. If I unleash and they wipe the board, we're gonna be a little sad. Ah, respect your elders. Yeah, if I foretell this one, I can only cast the other one for X equals one, which is not as much as I would like. So I guess we just cast this for X equals 2 and hope they don't wipe the board. Next turn I can foretell, maybe activate Castle once again. Time to improvise. Gets rid of double vision. Inventory to draw. And foretells another card. So it looks like we'll be able to take out Teferi at least. So let's attack. I'll have to send everyone at Teferi, although now that they plussed, I guess I can send a 1 1 at their face. So I'm expecting our opponent to cast some sort of board wipe next turn, but we'll be able to repopulate with another 1-1 one, one token and then maybe a big Starnheim unleashed following up. There's Doomscar. So if I were to unleash Starnheim, I could do it for X equals 3, which isn't bad. So we'll see if they have another Doomscar waiting for us. Alrun's Epiphany instead, to take an extra turn, make two birds. And another Teferi. So our opponent's playing the extra turn deck here with Teferi, Discontinuity, and now Alrun's Epiphany as well. Gets rid of Conqueror's Death, which is not too effective against our tokens. Alright, so... Heartless Act probably fine to kill a bird. Opponent's gonna loot. Time to improvise. And then I could send two angels and a 1 1 at the ferry and the other angel face. Time's up. And then I probably just activate Castle instead of playing Dream Devourer since we have enough pressure. Dream Devourer can still do quite a bit of damage with our two cards we can foretell. Another Doomscar. So our opponent's got one card in hand. We have an active Castle and some Sweepers that admittedly aren't very effective here. Right, Valkyrie isn't bad. So play this, play Dream Devourer. And then I'll hold on to Doomscar so we can hit harder with our Dream Devourer next turn. So if we gain 4 more life, we'll get the plus 2 plus 2 bonus, which is great with Castle. Inventory to draw 2 now. Alright. Cycles. So 
So, move to combats. So I could foretell twice more, or I can make a 1-1 one -one token instead. Long term it's probably better to make the 1-1. One -one. Ooh, Dream Trawler, that's a problem. Although we can wipe the board here. Another Valkyrie. So if I play Valkyrie, my creatures get plus four, plus four, thanks to double Valkyrie in play. So that would be enough to get past a Dream Trawler. So yeah, let's go for it. Attack with all. And our opponent seems dead. Alright, sweet, so we managed to outgrind the Jeskai extra turn control deck onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a land light hand, but our deck does have a lot of lands if we count Emerius Call. And we have Dream Devourer that can put in quite a bit of work, a sweeper if we need a sweeper. So, yeah, I don't hate it. So we'll have to wait and see whether this is a matchup where we expect to cast Doomscar early on or if we should just prioritize presenting threats. Up against Teamer. Right, we'll play a Dream Devourer. And then next turn by Foretelling we'll get to pump it up as well. So, opponents holding priority with one land up, which makes me think that they are a Tibal's Trickery deck holding like a Stonecoil Serpent or Tormal Script. We do have Soul Shatter, which is going to be great, and we also have Doomscar, which can potentially answer some problem cards. So, I think I do foretell Soul Shatter, and then next turn I can maybe double spell a one mana Soul Shatter plus foretell another card. We'll see if our instincts were correct. As we see the world tree. This is a time for Tibal's trickery. Yep. That happens. Could also soul shatter end of turn since it's an instance. But our opponent bricked hitting a second Tibal's trickery. So that's the fail case. All right, so time for Starnheim Unleashed to increase the pressure a bit. See if they have another trickery. Keeps the card on top. And Isika, we can Soul Shatter here. Just to be man efficient. All right, I guess it's time for just a four for angel here. And hope to pick up another land so we can double foretell. A Legion angel, which we can't cast, so attack, foretell. It's a bit of an awkward hand, but luckily our opponent isn't doing much. Although we would have had a lot of potential threats covered with that Soul Shatter and Doomscar. Another Soul Shatter. So I guess I attack and then get rid of this. And then next turn we should be able to close out the game. Assuming nothing crazy happens. Put 
opponent down to one to cast Kirabas the Sea God, but they're dead to the Angel plus Soul Shatter, also perfect answer to the Hexproof Kraken token. Alright, so not the most entertaining matchup maybe, but at least we showcase some of the countermeasures we have for the Tybalt's Trickery Nonsense decks. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and I see a hand that potentially could reenact the uh, scenario I uh, explained in the introduction of turn 2 Exile, turn 3 Valkyrie, turn 4 Retribution, turn 5 Make 2 Angels. So I'm gonna keep and hope for the best. Could also play Dream Devour on turn 2 instead of foretelling Sternheim Unleashed here, but we'll see what happens. Blue-black. Alright, let's go with Fortel. Still need land 4, but most lands will do. Kusima. Oh, Elspeth's Nightmare is the perfect answer here. get it before it goes on a vacation. And next turn the second chapter is gonna have a look, maybe take away a counter spell. Alright, our opponent with a Disruption, Shark Typhoon, Ugin and Extinction Event. A lot of cards that are effective against our tokens, especially Extinction Event. So Ugin's still pretty far away, but is the most threatening card long term. I think I still just take Extinction Event, and then for now we'll just uh, play Righteous Valkyrie to play around Disruption. Opponent has to decide if they want to make a 2-2 Shark. They do not. Eliminates, we'll take care of it. Alright. So now I don't hate playing Retribution. Or we could get a Dream Devourer in play and do some damage with that in the meantime. Now let's play Retribution. And then Soul Shatter could be an emergency answer to Ugin if that comes down. So I'm just gonna draw right away. So don't need to worry about playing around a Chori Disruption this turn. So if we Starnheim Unleashed for two, next turn a Double Strike could just be lethal. So I don't hate that idea. Hope they don't draw into Extinction Event. Yeah, let's go for it. They could play Fae of Wishes and make a shark as just Shum Blockers, but that's fine by me. Tome's gonna draw. They have an untapped land. Is their last unknown card another Extinction Event? Nope. Fae of Wishes as a 1-4. Which is not gonna cut it here, as we can Soul Shatter. And attack for a healthy 24 damage. So technically they were just dead on board too here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. With an acceptable hand. Got black mana for Heartless Act and Soul Shatter. Probably playing one of the Emiria Skulls. Tapped at least. Facing a turn one goose, maybe a food synergy deck. Alright, never mind. Turn to Burgi. So that seems like a must answer. Kill it before they can make any extra mana. And 
and then could keep up Soul Shatter. Probably no reason not to here. We can fetch a Swamp and then we'll have the black mana needed to activate Castle. Fabled Passage gets Mountain. And Questing Beast, perfect. Soul Shatter targets. Technically not a target, but you know what I mean. Well, this is tempting. Kill a goose. And then we'll wait a turn on Legion Angel. Still probably going to hang on to a Miria Skull in case we need more threats later. Bone Crusher just as a 4 3. Can maybe snipe a Great Henge or Ember Cleave here. Never mind, it's a Soul Seer Brush Taunter Goldspan Dragon deck. Take Soul Seer. And then Legion Angel lines up nicely against the Goldspan Dragon too. Gonna be a brush taunter for now. Think I'm okay taking the trade. Our late game is looking quite powerful here. Ooh, and a righteous Valkyrie even. Now we still probably want to play a Legion Angel first. But then next turn I could potentially double spell Valkyrie into a Legion Angel. Alright, so not going to get to 27 this turn, so we'll just attack first. Alright, opponent just gains a bit of life. And hits me for 4 thanks to the Bresh Taunter here. Alright, and then next turn Emiria's Call can gain 8 more life, potentially. Soul Seer deals with Valkyrie, that's fine. Opponent's at 19, about to face 4 Flying Angels. So I don't hate my spots, also have Castle as another mana sink. Just take the 1. So this definitely seems like a matchup where Black White Angels is going to shine. A creature deck that doesn't have a whole lot of interaction and our 4 4 Angels are large enough where they're able to block and attack well. And yeah, opponent seems pretty dead here. Soul Seer kills one of them, but they're still taking 12. All right, sweet. So we got a nice variety of matchups here with our black-white angels. Face some more aggressive decks, some more controlling decks. And overall, the deck's been performing quite well for me. Maybe not the initial build I had in mind for Righteous Valkyrie, but definitely the one that's been working out the best so far. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.